Okay, so one of the things that I noticed is that when we started talking about this within the county, uh, we all knew about it, but the community didn't know. And so I think when it came out that you guys were coming, it was a bit of a surprise. And we didn't really get to hear the LIB story, like your history. So tell me, what what's your story? Sure. Well, LIB... LIB is, uh, it's, it's been around for a long time and it, it's kind of evolved as the, the years have gone by. It actually started, uh, I think, 1999 as a birthday party for my two brothers. They're twins, they're a year older than me, and uh, we're partners in this in this business. And uh, it wasn't a business back then, it was just, you know, kids having fun. We, we found a little, you know, little nook in the mountain somewhere. We took about 100, 150 people out there and, and threw a birthday party. Not your average, average birthday party? No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> but it was called Lightning in a Bottle, and uh, it, it became an annual thing. And, uh, from there, it kind of snowballed a little bit into um, an actual 24-hour party event where we charge people to come. Uh, we we booked some DJs and musicians. We paid them to be there. Uh, it was the first time money was involved, and it went really well. And it was that was 2004, and it was just kind of a neat evolution to. That's about five years after the initial birthday party. Yeah. Okay. So it was just kind of the evolution, and uh, we liked that. So we took a year off. And we went and we wanted to find, you know, a proper venue to host, you know, a music and arts festival, you know, a three-day camping music and arts festival. And then that became the, you know, the beginning of Lightning in a Bottle as you know it now. It's certainly evolved and has grown since then. But we've, you know, since then, this is the fifth venue that we've used. We've always kind of been a nomadic festival. Uh, you know, it's all about the creativity and, and the art and the spirit and the energy that, that people bring. So it is really nice to mix it up and, and go to new venues. And for whatever reason, sometimes you have to change, sometimes you just want to change. Um, but we've been a nomadic festival, you know, this whole time. And we, we constantly evolve who we are, what we do, where we do it. And uh, we ended up here. Very good. And it's more than I think we all thought originally that was just a music festival, right? That's kind of how everybody captured it, sure. but it's, it's much more than that. You have a lot of art installations and uh, lessons, cooking classes, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a really diverse curation. Uh, I, everyone always thinks, oh, it's a concert or it's a rave or it's, right. you know, because that is front and center, you know, music is a big part of it. But uh, for us, we, we've never, we've intentionally tried to call it an arts and music festival and not a music and arts festival because we want to put the art first and art to us is you know that's always changing too we used to focus heavily on large art sculptures everywhere and then the last few years we've been kind of steering it into more interactive art areas you know places to lure people in and you know let them be a part of the art experience not just looking at it but but having an active role in the art uh, whether you definitely it's, saw that right yes yeah, so everything that was out here you could you can interact you can be a part of it yeah. sit with it or and so that's been the goal of the last few years is to really create that element to get people involved to kind of get them out of their shell a little bit mm -hmm. and, and force them to participate and uh, so that you know that's a big part of what the event is Very I think cool. why it's so so fun okay so why Buena Vista why Kern County yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, you know, being event producers, and if you ask any of them, you know, the ultimate goal is to always find a better venue. Uh, and you're always on the hunt, no matter what. And every time you see a piece of land, we're just trained to think, where could we put a stage over there? Or whatever, even if you're just driving down the freeway right. and you see a plot of land, you're like, huh, you know, we could do an event there. It's just, that's who we are. That's how we look at the world. Um, and, you know, in our endless hunt for venues, we stumbled upon this, which really surprises me because it's so close to LA. We didn't know this was here. It's right off the five. Uh, and I, I pulled up the county parks website and just started going through all the parks in Kern County and stumbled upon this. Then you pull it up on Google Earth and you look at the surrounding area and you just kind of you get excited about that and then my brothers and I hopped in the car and we drove out here and we looked at it and when we got here we were just we were floored we were like 
this this gorgeous lake these you know I don't know how many trees are here and different kinds of trees and actual grass like we don't have grass many places in California and we've only had one LIB where there's been grass so all these elements really excited us um, we have a list uh, a checklist really when we're looking at venues and this checked more boxes than any place we've ever been um, and that that That's really excited us so you know when you look at lake trees grass flat proximity to, to the cities proximity to freeways uh, some infrastructure all these things are, are on our list and uh, this place we were just checking them off the list and it was like all right this is this is gonna be a great spot and you know then you have to get lucky and, and hope that you have a county that actually wants to go down this path with you and, and we found that very cool so Jeff have we ever done anything like this in uh, any of our parks In the, in the two decades that I've been with the county, I have never known for the county to be as involved with a kind of reservation and an event that was this widespread, the number of people, the number of days. Um, so the short answer is no. Uh, we have the county, our county has a, has a lot of events. Right. Uh, whiskey flat days, um, the fair, um, Motorsports big right. in Kern County and and music is a huge part of Kern County, but as far as a sustained kind of arts, cultural, and musical um, event, uh, we have not entered into this uh, into this arena prior. Well done, sir. So we've never never blocked out our park for five days. Not in total. Okay. We do have there. We we do have some spaces in Kern County, Strandler Park, where we do one, right. two, three thousand people. Um, other other parks. There is a there is an event this weekend in this park um, that's going to be about three thousand people. But they're small. They're usually one or two days. They don't involve the amount of um, preparation that this required for. Uh, for safety, security, and just logistics. Right. So why would we as a county or as you as a parks director, why would we consider this? Why would we The be better question is why wouldn't we? From a budgetary perspective, um, we've been challenged by the board and by the CAO to find uh, to find creative ways of changing the way that we do business. And this is a, a fantastic example with a great partner to kind of further that. So I go back to why not? Um, we have an asset that is uh, that we can use uh, that we can use in a different way, and in and in some instances a better way. Um, it provides something for the county to be recognized for. It provides something for people in Kern County to come to, as well as from abroad. It provides a platform for us to showcase our county. Um, so it checks. Uh, Didi just mentioned checking all the boxes from their festival, festival perspective. It really checks all the boxes for the county from a marketing and a use perspective as well. Very cool. So Didi, what was the process like? I say that a little tongue in cheek because I know we uh, sure. it's a pretty short timeline and we just kind of pushed a square peg into a round hole sometimes. So. Yeah, and uh, you know the process was unique. Um, you know. First off, we, we came to Jeff and his team with this idea. And it wasn't just an idea, you know, it was an incredibly ambitious timeline. We, we first made contact in September, and then we really dove in middle of November. And that's right before the holidays start, and you know, you know government slows down, everything slows down. Uh, yeah, we were pushing hard to, to be able to go through all the legwork, um, work with all the different agencies, and get approval. And, uh, you know, we, we, we crammed a lot into a little bit of time. And to, to make that a little more hectic, it is new here in this county, something of this scale. Uh, so there was a lot more work to be done, um, you know, with all these agencies. And so, you know, at times it was stressful, at times it was hard, but uh, in, in recapping that with everyone now, Everyone, including us, learned a lot through this process. You know, I think the county agencies came together. I know Commander Morrison from the Sheriff's Office was, was holding these Thursday meetings 
uh, every Thursday leading up to the event for months. And that was an opportunity for all the county agencies and us to come together and really flush things out in real time, not over email, not drawn out, you know, where things get lost in the mix. It was just like we all come together and we, we work on this event and this process together. And I think that was the beginning of, uh, for the county, something really successful. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know that there were a lot of really good reports from, from having those meetings. Yeah. And we really appreciated that opportunity as well. So it started off, you know, it starts off a little clunky. People start to get to know each other. You know, we, we start to really get to build a relationship, build some trust. Um, and then the ultimate thing for us was, and we knew this, was that we had to come out here, have the event, prove to everyone that we were gonna do what we said we were gonna do. Um, you know, the lip service only goes so far, and, uh, and we know that. So it was, you know, we knew we had to get through the process this year and actually just prove ourselves on site at the event. And uh, we hope we did that. You know, and, and based on some conversations and, and recapping we've been doing, we, we feel like we have. So. It's a perfect segue, thank you. Um, so how did the overall event go? What did your attendees think? I've looked at some of the, like your Instagram feed, and it seems pretty positive. It warms my heart at least. So, but what's your perspective? Yeah, my perspective is the same. My heart is warm. Uh, you know, we didn't do this without struggles, and that's just the nature of this business. But the event itself was was tremendously successful. People absolutely love this venue. We love working at this venue and, and creating here. It creates a lot of opportunity for us. Uh, you know, just reading the social media reviews, people really did enjoy it. They, uh, they, you can see and hear the respect they had for the different agencies that they got to meet out here. You know, whether fire, whether law enforcement, uh, whether just you know, random county agencies that are out here doing their business. Everyone got along. Everyone mingled. Everyone, you know, um, came together and put on a successful event. So we're really proud of that. We're proud of the work we've done. We're proud of the audience for coming out and stepping up and being good ambassadors of, of what Lightning in a Bottle is. And, you know, we've, we've asked people to, throughout the year, to, to really look at themselves and, and how, how they act and how they represent this community because it's not just a festival, it is a community to us. So we ask people to step up and, and acknowledge the community that we're coming to and respect them and show appreciation for them, and, and they really did that. And, uh, so we're proud of that fact. Um, so I think overall, you know, we loved it, they loved it. Um, so yeah. Jeff, your overall impression of how the event went? The event itself, um, uh, the five days, uh, went uh, very well. I I was out several times during the event, including late at night one night on a Friday night just to get a full, uh, kind of a full view of, of everything. Um, uh, everything that, that Didi is saying in terms of the art and the kind of interaction and the interactivity with the people and the event, and that event is either art or it's the rover ring um, is very interactive and you can see the people uh, when people were mo milling about uh, they were going from one place because they knew that there was something else that they wanted to see so it was from my perspective it was really good the things I was hearing as I was just sort of listening um, were all very uh, were uniformly positive people were having a good time um, and, uh, and it was good to see. So from that perspective, the event itself uh, seemed to me to be uh, everything that was promised both to the patron or to the attendees as well as anticipated from the, uh, from the county perspective as well. So very under control and um, coordinated well. Uh, as far as the, the span, the build up, and now the, the tear down, the, the set up and tear down, um, I'm seeing exactly what we uh, what we were promised, uh, and I expect uh, a rollout with a whisper as uh, as they leave and um, preparing for next year. So uh, aftermath, that's something that people have commented on, um, and I'll pitch that to both of you. Um, when I walk around and I look at the park, um, it it looks pretty spotless, right? I mean. We could, we could walk around the three of us right now and we're probably not gonna find much. So to, 
from your perspective, I know you came out here immediately the day everybody was leaving. So what do you see? So um, aftermath has a negative connotation. So I wouldn't use that term. Um, what I would say is that um, is that they're demobbing the site as they portrayed that they would and we expected. Um, they met that expectation. There was a lot, there, there was uh, there was a lot of interest early on as soon as the event started to break mm -hmm. uh, and the demobilization sort of started. Uh, I think that some of the interest was, was focused in a way that probably wasn't uh, a good example of what the, the promoters were going to do. Uh, as I walk through driving in today, I see nothing in the adjacent fields. I see nothing over in the RV parking area or the overflow parking area. Everything that we see here um, is as it, substantially as it was the day before they stepped foot. So I would guess that somebody from LA who never knew that this event was gonna happen, that has a reservation on the 22nd, would never know that anything, that there were up to 18,000 people for five days here. How about your perspective on that? I know you have a whole green team that is meticulously, like I wish I had a shot of them right now. They walk around with a bucket and a little picker and they grab every little thing. They did it all the way through the festival. Yeah, no, it's really important to us to not just create a clean space for the festival to you know, take place. You know, we don't want people littering, but we also don't want people you know, trying to enjoy themselves with, with trash around. So it's, it's a core part of our ethos. And, and having being as sustainable as possible as, as an event, and especially one of this size, is definitely one of our core goals. Um, so yeah, when when we leave, you know, we want to leave, we want to leave a place better than we found it, and that's always our goal. And uh, we're out here now, we're working on that, and, and uh, pretty confident that by the time we're out of here, in you know, a few days, a week, whatever it is, people won't recognize or won't. You know, people won't realize that a big event of this nature just took place. You know, and, and uh, it's funny, I, I saw some news stuff this week, you know, a day after the event ended. You know, I, I see a, a news network posting photos of piles of trash, and uh, I, I kind of laugh at that because, yes, that's our process. We make piles of trash and then we get rid of it. We don't just get rid of it, we actually go through and we sort it all before we get rid of it. But then I saw two photos of big piles of junk, trash, if you will. And I was like, hey, wait a minute, that's our stuff. <laughs> it was like a pile of furniture at a, one of our art installations. I was like, that's going to get sorted and put on a truck. That's not trash, you know. <laughs> so I just kind of laughed at some of that stuff. But, right. um, you know, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised that the, the park is going to be put back to normal. And, uh, you know, we're, we're making the improvements that we need to make and, and we're fixing the things that, that we need to fix. And uh, that's all part of the plan. Awesome. Last question. Where do you go from here? Where do we go from here? I um, first I want to go home and take a long nap. I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been here at the park for over three weeks straight, which I actually really love. This is like a bizarre, weird summer camp for a lot of us. Um, but no, we, you know, we've already started the conversations with uh, with Jeff and, and some of the other county folks um, about coming back next year. You know, that's the hope. That was always the long-term plan. We expressed that to the board. Uh, we express that to everyone that we worked with that doing this kind of show is not a one-off you know it doesn't make any sense as a business so um, we we want to start talking about next year and, and how we can come back and and make it better and throughout the whole process uh, like Jeff had mentioned too we did what we said we were gonna do but we used the the whole event as okay now how do we make it better and that's talking real time with the sheriffs and the fire department and, and our people and we're making notes and uh, we're constantly trying to identify how we can improve ourselves and just kind of improve the overall uh, festival. So we're, we've already leapt into next year and uh, that's kind of where our mind is at right now. Very cool. Well, thanks for carving out some time, guys. Of course. And maybe we'll see you next year. Hopefully.